program starring Jack Benny with Don Bester and his orchestra. And the orchestra opens the program with Over My Shoulder from Evergreen. And now I present to you Mr. Jack Charles Lawton Benny of Wimpole Street. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. Did you hear me? <laughs> Well, folks, I started wearing my winter undies this morning, and am I hot tonight? Oh, you're always hot, Jack. But not like tonight, Don. Now, before the pests come in, you know, the people who annoy me, I want to get in a real good story. I'm in that mood tonight. It's old, but what's the difference? You know, even new stories get old the minute you tell them. Anyway, there was a traveling salesman, a farmer, and a farmer's daughter. But one day, the daughter... Hey, Jack, that story is too old. It is? Why, certainly. The daughter is happily married now and has five children. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's news to me. <laughs> well, we don't need her in. There was, a, there was a traveling salesman and a farmer. So one day the farmer... But Jack, that was years ago. The farmer sold his farm and now is a movie star in Hollywood. Oh, yeah? Say, I wish him all the luck in the world. But I must go ahead with the story. There was a traveling salesman and nobody. So uh, one day, nobody came to the farm. I mean, the salesman. Oh, I forgot and... to tell you, Jack. Oh. The salesman isn't traveling anymore. He runs a store in his hometown. I'll tell this story if it kills me. There was a storekeeper, a movie star, and a woman with five children. Now you've got it, Jack. Now you've got it. Go right ahead. Go ahead with what? Who's interested in a fellow that's too old to travel and a woman with a flock of children? I am, Jack. Go ahead. Tell it. Oh, hello, Frank. Listen, Parker, I'm glad you got here. There was a traveling salesman, a farmer, and a farmer's daughter. So the salesman... That wasn't a salesman, Jack. If I remember right, it was a sailor. A sailor? And what would a sailor be doing at a farmhouse? Well, how do you know it was a farmhouse? Maybe it was a battleship. All right, Frank, all right. There was a traveling sailor, a battleship, and the battleship's daughter. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Well, I know it wasn't a salesman. Hey, Parker, what's Jack hollering about? I don't know. He's nuts. <laughs> Nice company I've got. Say, Bester, come here. You're pretty smart for a musician. Now stop me if you've heard this. There was a traveling salesman, a farmer, and the farmer's daughter. So the, uh... Oh, have you heard it? Heard it? I was the farmer. <laughs> you were? Well, don't you remember me? I was the traveling salesman. <laughs> Who's that? The farmer's daughter. Mary! Well, here we are together again. <laughs> Mary... Listen, Mary, do you think that joke is too old about the traveling salesman and the farmer? Nothing gets old, Jack. I've been watching the Cats and Jammer kids for the past 20 years, and they haven't aged a bit. She's right, Jack. Nothing gets old. Why, look at the Statue of Liberty. She's been standing in the harbor for 50 years, and her face doesn't show it. Clean living, Don. That's what does it, you know? <laughs> and look at the Brooklyn Bridge. 65 years old, not a gray hair on it. You know? That's right, Jack. And look at King Tut. He's been lying in a tomb for 3,000 years and looks better than you do. Oh, yeah? Well, if Jack could take a nap for a couple of thousand years, he'd look good, too. <laughs> You're right, Frank. Nothing becomes antiquated. What's antiquated, Jack? I don't know. I just read these lines. I don't write them, you know. <laughs> Can I play, too, Jack? Sure. Go ahead, Bester. Well, look at old Mother Hubbard. She hasn't changed much. Say, I think she had something in her cupboard besides bones. <laughs> Don't you, Wilson? Sure she did. She had Jello in all six delicious flavors. And it tastes twice as good as ever before. Oh, raspberry. Yes, and strawberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. You said a mouthful. Play, Don. This program is just like a dinner. We always end up with Jello. That was, uh, that was I Thought the Art Play by Don Stern his orchestra. By the way, Don, I see where you and the boys are playing at the uh, Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh this week. How are you doing? Oh, fine, Jack. We're doing well. And incidentally, I saw your picture, a uh, transatlantic merry-go-round. How'd you know it was my picture? Hmm. I saw Nancy Carroll's name in lights. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that was my picture, all right. Um, but tell me, Don, how did you like me in it? Very cute. Mm, cute. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of, you yeah? Oh, I saw your picture, too, Jack, and I thought you looked swell in that blonde wig. Blonde wig? Yeah, didn't you wear a blonde wig? That was Jean Raymond. Oh. 
No wonder you look so good. <laughs> Mary, never mind how I look. The main thing is, how did you like my acting? I never noticed it. Look at Mary, that scene where I'm in love with a girl and I have to give her up because she loves somebody else. Why, it was heartrending. You said it. I saw it, Jack. I saw it and I thought it was great, but of course you couldn't expect to win the girl against a fellow like Gene Raymond. Is that so? Jack lost better girls than Gene Raymond will ever get. Thanks, Mary, thanks. Well, anyway, folks, going back from the screen to the air, this evening we are bringing you another great artist in our series of guest stars. Tonight, we have a real surprise for you, a real thrill for you lovers of the opera. And who doesn't love opera? Ah, when we think back to the days when we had stars like Nellie Melba, Lucia de Lammermoor, and Lil Travator. <laughs> ah, what singers they were. It just makes us wish we were young again. Well, tonight, we have secured for this program, Eddie Cantor turned her down, Phil Baker didn't want her, will they be sorry? We have secured that great Colorado soprano, Miss Galley Kerchew. <laughs> Kazintai. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Kerchu in person. Ah, Madam Kerchu, say hello to the folks. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Never mind the chorus. I can tell by just those few notes that you're a genius. <laughs> uh, Madam Kerchu, I think you are without a doubt the outstanding singer of the day. Yes, that's the trouble. I'm outstanding, but Lily Pons is inside sitting. <laughs> Well, I, <laughs> I wouldn't let that worry you. What's Lily Pond's got that you haven't got? Hmm. Of course, that can be acquired. <laughs> now, tell us, madam, when did you first discover that you were a singer? When I tried to dance. I see. I see. Frank Parker has the same trouble. Mary, quiet. <laughs> Mary, that's Madam Galley Kerchew. I like Tuts Rosini better. Never mind her, madam. Never mind. But tell me, I suppose it's pretty, uh, you find... <laughs> That was cute, Mary. But tell me, I suppose it's uh, pretty hard work becoming an opera singer. No, you just open your mouth and let it go. Mm. <laughs> you must have studied on an ocean liner. <laughs> now, how about entertaining us? How about entertaining us with a number or two? I know we'd all be thrilled. Have you brought uh, any selections with you? Yes, here's the racing form and the morning telegram. That about covers everything, huh? Well, what would you like to hear? I don't care. We'd appreciate anything at all. Are you familiar with Madame Butterfly? No, but I'm a great friend of Charlie Butterworth. Is that so? Well, what's Butterworth now? About 40 cents a pound. Mary, <laughs> keep that joke for our grocery store, will you? Pardon this interruption, madam, but sing anything at all. I'm sure we'll all be delighted. Hmm? Well, what would you like? Uh, would you care for uh, La Boheme or La Paloma? Why well, mention cigars on the Jello program, you know? <laughs> you have uh, quite a large repertoire, haven't you? Hmm? What's the difference as long as she's healthy? <laughs> Don't get personal. Now, now, Mary, professional courtesy. Well, madam, sing anything at all, anything at all. Hmm? How about uh, Angela Mia? Oh, that'll be fine. Angela Mia. <laughs> now, uh, before you start, madam, uh, what is your range? Gas. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're a gas star, huh? But what I mean is, what notes do you reach? Here, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, let me have that sheet of music, Don. Uh, madam, uh, can you reach this uh, note here? Yes, if it stops walking. Don, see that those B-flat notes stop moving around. <laughs> Go ahead, Madam. Angela Mia. Oh, by the way, I'll have Don Paderewski accompany you on the piano. Oh, is that Paderewski? Yes, if you're Galley Kirchner, yes. <laughs> and who are you? Will Rogers. I mean, Go ahead, Don. Give her an introduction. <laughs> Ought to be very good, I think. Angelo for me, uh, and some for you, a uh, two. That puts the punch in jello. Play, Don, play. Well, why didn't you let me finish the song? That's all we wanted, madam. Now run along to the opera house and play. Hmm? I'll never come to this dump again. <laughs> That's the idea, yes. Oh, madam, for two, may I have your autograph? Yes, certainly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Senor Tito Rufo Parker will make amends by singing The Moon Was Yellow. Do you want my autograph, Jack? No, just a cigarette, Frank. That's all. <laughs> that was Frank Parker singing The Moon Was Yellow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I tell you that tonight, the beautiful Hawaiian Islands have been added to our list of stations. 
and for the first time this program reaches that faraway group of islands in the Pacific. I am sure that you would like to know something about this romantic and industrious place. On some of our past programs in a former series of broadcasts, we have taken you by means of a travelogue film through England, France, Ireland, China, and India. And tonight, to mark this very special occasion, we are going to take you on a trip through the Hawaiian Islands, where they love Americans, but pick on you. Mary, has the uh, picture operator arrived yet? Yes, he's here, Jack. Well, have him get the reel ready. Reel of film. This little trip will go on immediately after the next number, played by Don Bester and his Connecticut Hawaiians. Pack your bags, folks, and get ready for the trip. Uh, Don, will you play something to get us in the proper mood? Wiki-waki molokai amu. <laughs> he said yes, folks. The play, Don. Don <laughs> Bester and the boys playing You've Gotta Give Credit to Love. That was very good, Don. Fine Hawaiian music. And now, folks, the loyal and hardy comedy has just finished, so we will now run our travelogue, which we call Through Romantic Hawaii. The Hawaii's, as you know, are a little group of islands in the Pacific Ocean, about two inches from Hollywood on a small map, or 2,000 miles if you really mean business. <laughs> there are eight of these islands in the group, five of which are inhabited, and in order of importance, they are named Hawaii, How Have You Been, How's the Missus, How's Trick, and one more. Uh, what's the fifth one, Mary? Likewise. Likewise, that's right. Huh? In this group, Hawaii stands out like the hips on your Aunt Emma. <laughs> and now for our travelogue. Lights out, quiet, please. A little atmospheric music on. <laughs> Don, Don, that was our grocery store music. This is for Hawaii. Jack, there are grocery stores in Hawaii, too. I don't care. I want Hawaiian music. All right, Jack, don't cry. All right. That's it. Start the film, Charlie. And here is the picture. Oh. As our boat steams into the beautiful harbor, we already sense the magic of these enchanting isles under a glamorous tropical moon. Oh. And what a brilliant moon it is, turning night into day. Parker can have his yellow moon. Morton Downey can have his Carolina moon. But give me the Hawaiian moon. How about you, Wilson? I'll have scotch and soda. Oh. We follow the white line and find ourselves entering the picturesque harbor of Honolulu, where we discover the natives already assembled to greet us. Fine, fine, fine. All right, don't overdo it, natives. In a jiffy, we are down the gangplank, and here we are in Honolulu. It is Lulu's birthday, so we arrive just in time to Honolulu. Yeah. We're sorry we told this joke and ducked merrily down the main street of this romantic city to see the sight. And at this moment, from where we are standing, we can see several mountain peaks. What kind of dogs are those, Jack? We are told that the chief industries of Honolulu are romance and pineapples. But as there are very few pineapples being thrown these days, romance predominates. Ah, sweet romance. Love is in the air. And here comes a maiden fair with teeth like pearls and jet black hair. Hello, babe. Bam. This maiden fooled us. So we merrily wend our way hither and thither. And daylight time finds us lost. So we stop a native boy and address him as follows. We are lost, sir. Can you tell us the way to Waikiki? Yakahula hickey doola wiki wiki. We are still lost. An evening finds us wending our Mary, way. Very quiet. Young man, are you a native here? Yes, sir. Well, we've lost our way. Can you direct us to Waikiki? No, sir. Well, do you know where the Royal Hawaiian Hotel is? I don't know. He looks like Frank Parker to me. Mary. Well, <laughs> well young man, can you tell me what street this is? I don't know. Yeah, you don't know anything, do you? No, but I'm not lost. Hmm. What a sap you are. A what? Sap, sap. I don't understand. Sap, what comes out of trees? Monkeys like you. <laughs> We knock over a native tenor and hastily depart, still following the white line, and morning finds us in Malakamokalu. We look at our script and find ourselves hungry. So we stop at a little restaurant called the Presto Lunch, run by a native, Mr. Wikikula Slapapopoulos. We enter this romantic eating place and order some of their native food, which consists chiefly of fish and poi. Hey, waiter, waiter. Coming right up. What do you like to eat? 
Give us two orders of fish and poi. What kind? We got apple poi, peach poi, and strawberry poi. Have you got any children? Yes, one poi. Mm, just, uh... Just to bring me a ham sandwich. And you, lady? I'll have some jello. Thanks, Mary. You're welcome, Don. Even in Hawaii, you can't get away from Wilson. <laughs> we finish our dinner. All right, all right. <laughs> and again, follow the white line from Mola Kamokalu to Vututurveyabu. A fascinating little hamlet only a few miles distant. We are told that the chief industry here is hula dancing. And we arrive in time to see some of the natives at work. <laughs> These little girls are doing their dance in a costume made of hay. There's a hungry horse approaching one of the girls, and she will soon be doing a fan dance. <laughs> shall we stop and talk to one of these fair maidens? Yes, we shall, just as we rehearsed it. Quiet, Mary. Oh, miss, come here. Come here, Jahemi. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, boy, are we short of Hawaiians. <laughs> Tell me, young lady, is that your native dance, the hula? Yes, sir. Well, why do you vibrate so while dancing? It's time for my medicine, and the doctor told me to shake well before using. We shake the girls, once more following the white line, and high evening finds us on the beach at Waikiki, where we should have been in the first place. And we haven't met a Hawaiian yet. Waikiki is the very famous resort that you hear so much about, and it is truly one of the beauty spots of the world. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, boy, are you a Burton Holmes? <laughs> we ignore this jealous person and follow the white line to the water's edge where we decide to go in bathing. Can I take a dip, too, Jack? Yes, you dope. Dip dope, as long as I can swim. <laughs> ah, what teen sport, bathing and splashing in the blue waters of Waikiki. While we are indulging in this little diversion, we at last run into a real Hawaiian, who is also dunking himself in the ocean. Hello there. How do you do, stranger? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you a Hawaiian? What? Are you a Hawaiian? What else? Go on, you're not a Hawaiian, I know you Sure, my name is Schlepperman Certainly, Schlepperman, Mary, look who's here Hello, Schlepp Tell me, Schlepperman, what are you doing in Hawaii? What do you mean, Hawaii? This is Coney Island Coney Island? You're done tootin' Well, listen, what are those hula dancers doing here? What hula dancers? That's Minsky Show, they're playing on the boardwalk Mary, we had the wrong film, this is Coney Island you're telling me a herring just bit me. <laughs> so we return to our steamer and again follow the white line. As we sail up the beautiful East River, leaving Waikiki, or Coney Island, we hear in the distance the natives singing their fond farewell. After this, get me the right travelogue, and we sincerely apologize to Hawaii. Play, Don. The moment you open a package of Jell-O and smell that delectable fresh fruit fragrance, you know that Jell-O's flavor is extra rich. And when you dissolve those delicate crystals in warm water and sniff again that enticing fruit aroma, like a fragrance wafted from a fruit orchard, you have more proof of Jell-O's new extra rich goodness. And when you pour your Jell-O into a mold and fill it to beautiful shimmering firmness, when you dip in your spoon and take your first taste, ah... Uh, then you know for sure that Jell-O tastes twice as good. Crystal clear, colors as gay as the rainbow, and flavors as delightful as the rich, fresh fruit itself. All six kinds of Jell-O are extra rich, crammed with fruit flavor. 
strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Look for the big red letters on the box. They tell you here's a dessert your family will go for in a great big way. concludes our fourth program in the new Jello series. And even though we gave you the wrong travelogue tonight, I hope you were entertained. Oh, Jack. What, Mary? I just found the Hawaiian travelogue. It was lying on the piano. Too late now, Mary. Good night, folks. <laughs> The selection you're devastating is from the production Roberta. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.